welcome to our second tabletop spoiler guide. Whoop, whoop. Tyler, I'm so excited. I had such a ball last time we did one of these. Guys, I am the pumped. last time we did this was like, what, March, February? I wasn't <laughs> even here. That's true. That's true. You weren't even here, This Sam. is Sam's first tabletop spoiler guide. Aww. Yeah, so we've, uh, up until now, after, you know, we've only had one episode that happened to overlap with a second edition adventure, and this is the second. So, spoiler warning, if the title or the description was not enough, um, we will be heavily spoiling the Adventure Path quest for the Frozen Flame here. I'm not going to talk about every little detail about what the characters do, because, you know, some of it is not that interesting. But I will be talking about the overarching plot and the twists. Yes. So, so if you're a player, definitely turn this off. <laughs> if you are running this as a GM, feel free to stay and just kind of get a overarching yeah. plot and see if, you know, something you want to run. I, up until reading it, was not that interested in running it. But after I read it, I'm like, ooh, this is actually seems like a lot of fun. So if you're in my Monday group, Connor, I know you listen to this. <laughs> uh, you either need to stop listening now or... Continue to listen and then don't say anybody. So don't say anything to anybody else because I think I want to run this one after we finish Abomination Vaults. Let's go. So the quest for the Frozen Flame is kind of a big old hex crawl. Okay. I like me a good hex crawl. Which we've talked about. I think I think we've talked about it in one of our campaigns. But basically a hex crawl is like instead of doing your normal like, oh, I go to this city and then this happens and I have this combat and whatever. Like a hex crawl is basically you look at the map and then you move your characters around a map and it'll take like days or weeks or mm -hmm. whatever, depending on how big the hexes are, um, to travel and things happen. In each hex, there might be events or whatever. So this is kind of a big hex crawl. And throughout this campaign, you're building a following. You are scouts for the Broken Tusk following. Okay. With a broken tusk clan. Are we trying to do heroic or brave things to become herders, or are we just like the low people? No, so you are currently scouts. We're level one. Okay. Yeah. This is like a one to 20. Yeah, oh, uh, th okay. this is a three book adventure, so it is one to 11. Okay. So if you want an adventure that, you know, doesn't go a full 20, because I know some of those take forever, it's three books, one to 11. Okay. Relatively nice. So I'm going to need somebody to back the broken tusks. <laughs> Who who wants to be? <laughs> oh no, it's Ryan and I pitted against each other yes. once again. What's uh, the other side though? Yeah, which which what are our options? You are the rival clan in this adventure are the Burning Mammoths. Oh, so the Broken so Tusks choose. and the Burning Mammoths. Oh, I'm like, which one's the villain? <laughs> I want to be the Burning Mammoths. Burning right. Mammoths. Team Broken Tusk, let go. Team Broken Tusks. Okay, so you are. Ryan, the Broken Tusk clan. And you and the party plays as scouts for the clan. Good. So the adventure I think I'm the villain. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the adventure starts out as you are doing your thing, you have your path, you have your following, whatever. And news comes, word comes that you are about to be like kind of overrun <gasps> by a rival clan, the burning the burning mammoths. <gasps> it's me. Those monsters. <laughs> yes. So the first part of the campaign is like, as the scouts, you are trying to scout a path to flee from the Burning Mammoths. Oh, so we're not even going to try to fight them. We're just running away. Yeah, you're like, you, you're getting chased and you're like, we are not strong enough to, oh, to face okay. this warband. I'm a strong baddie. Run away! <laughs> yes. So, so like, that's part of the hex crawl. You're choosing your path. Like, we need to, you're kind of like oh, scouting cool. the path through to keep your following safe. Okay. So as you flee east, you, you end up talking to somebody who says there might be an artifact that can help you. Of course. Called the Primordial Flame. The Primordial Flame. Yes. Sounds of course. very cool. So you find this and you're like, okay, now we need to go. We need to get away from the Burning Mammoth Clan. We need to find this Primordial Flame. We just need to get away from Sam's Clan. I think I should get the Primordial Flame. I'm a Burning Mammoth. We like fire. Uh, hmm. Disagree. Hard disagree. Rude. That's fair. As you run, as the adventurers run into uh, kind of the Tusk Mountains, which... I mentioned it briefly, but it kind of like splits the realm of the Mammoth Lords in half. Kind okay. Of, like kind of a mountain range. Tusk, Tusk Mountains. You guys are like finding your safe path, whatever. And then, shocker, you're betrayed. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Somebody in your clan has joined the Burning Mammoths. Yeah, that's because we have 
prizes and cookies. <laughs> we got cookies. <laughs> so you have to fight them off, and that's kind of like book one, where okay. you're where you're like doing the exploration, kind of running away, leveling up. So you're you're still building your following throughout all this. Like you need to get power, but kind of like fight off this rival clan. A betrayal. Yeah. So the place where you have heard where the flame was, it's not there. So oh, dang it. You find out that it's in a place called the Lost Mammoth Valley. Mm. So you guys end up getting there. You're you get into this huge valley and there's still some more exploration there. There's a bunch of different places to explore there, but you're now trying to kind of find your way out. More escape. Okay. Yeah, because there's a way in, the burning mammoths followed you in, and you're trying to get out. Are they chasing us the whole time we're in the valley too? Or did they like, nope, we're not going in there? You're kind of being chased to some extent this entire campaign. Sam, um, leave me alone. I don't give up, Ryan. Clearly. <laughs> I'm not sure why I am after your <laughs> tribe, but I can't stop now. <laughs> She's like, we've come too far. And we're fully committed. It's too embarrassing to stop now, so I'm going to keep <laughs> keep going for it. <laughs> So, oh my gosh, I told we told everyone like two months ago we were doing this. Like, we can't back down. Yeah. <laughs> We've lost our motivation, but we're going to keep going. <laughs> yeah. So as you, as the Broken Tusks are in the Lost Mammoth Valley, you find out while exploring that both the exit and the primordial flame are in the lair of a white dragon. Oh, so that like, can be dangerous. Yeah. So you oh, guys, sure. your goal in both cases is through this dragon's lair. Okay. So this dragon is called the Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus. And for the most part, you you fight your way through and you succeed. You confront the dragon, you fight it, you you take oh. it out and you get the pr- primordial flame. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Campaign over. We did. Can I or uh is like it? question how are we holding the primordial flame? Does it fit <laughs> in a mason jar? Is it like on a stick? Um, is it in my hearts? I believe it's like <laughs> Uh, it's like a it's like a lamp. Okay. Okay. So so yeah, the prim- primordial flame is a lamp. But here's the issue: primordial flame is cursed. There's always a catch. Oh. Always a curse. Should have known. It's the genie in the lamp. Yes, that ends book two. Dang it! You have the primordial flame. You thought we're good, but you're still in danger. Loss after loss. The tusks are not doing the tusks great. Tusks are. Do we know what the curse is? Yes. So basically. Anybody who wields it cannot be separated from it, so you can't get rid of it, and it causes you terrible anguish. Oh, <laughs> while really while upsetting. you are kind of holding it, like a lot of Pathfinder cursed objects, it's one of those things where like it's usually bad, and you can't get rid of it. Okay, so who told Ryan's clan that this was a good idea? Kind of a a sage earlier. The prim- primordial fame is kind of like a mythic. Mm. item sure so the like, stories foretold yeah the prophecies sam so it wasn't necessarily like subterfuge like yeah go find this thing it'll be no, great it's wink, like wink. yeah so it, it wasn't like a big you know 4d chess plan it was mm. like okay this thing according to the history was actually a, it was a, in the elder scrolls obviously well sure i just didn't know if the burning mammoths were so sneaky that we infiltrated the sage and planted the idea of this terrible I mean, terribly cool object. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then suckers. Right. So now it's cursed. And you know, you, you basically kind of find out that you have to track down this person named Meadowak. Meadowak? Okay. To kind of like lift the curse. Okay. Oh. And we'll get to him in a minute. As you guys kind of get out of the valley, you end up in a place called Hillcross, which is kind of a, like a big walled area that's kind of safe and, and a good safe haven for you okay. and your following okay unfortunately the frost giants hello <gasps> they have come to attack loss oh. after loss after loss the tusks are having a bad yeah. year but the scouts are able to fend them off good as expected and here's where i talked a little bit on the last episode you are awarded the title of mammoth lords oh okay and so the next part of the book is you get some megafauna mounts <gasps> and you go across the yes. land looking, it's Ryan's dream yeah. yes which is why i'm like 
I need to play this campaign. Yes! This place, this, this seems amazing. So, what are my options for mammoth? Like, is it only mammoths, or can I, can I pick other megafauna? Uh, I think there. Are, I think mammoths are the canon option. I think there might be a couple others. I'd have to look at the list. Can I ride a triceratops? Uh, that is one of the options. <gasps> I want mouth. a saber toothed tiger. I think that is one of the options. I'm not sure. Let's go. That'd be sweet. Right. <laughs> I'm in. This is way better than the elk we got in your campaign, Sam. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, <laughs> okay, you guys are level three, and you're <laughs> not in a cool place. I don't know. Yeah. And so, as we are continuing, obviously, we are kind of speeding through this campaign. Sure. You take longer. So, th- you know, this isn't as quick as what's going on, but I'm just hitting the high points. Sure. So, you guys follow Meadowax Trail to the Timarnian Tar Forest. Tamarnian Tar Forest. Okay. Yes. Is that still in the realm of the Mammoth Lords? Yes. Yes. Okay. So all of this is kind of still in the land in the country. Okay. And here's where, turns out, the Burning Mammoth leader, Ivarsa. Oh, hey, what's up, my girl? Yeah. <laughs> and Frost Giant ally, Hedramon. <laughs> that sounds like a Digimon, but okay. Yes. I was just going to say does, it's a it Digimon. Does. Hedramon. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Tyler is a huge Digimon fan. I am a huge Digimon fan. <laughs> Ryan always makes fun of me because about once a year, I'm like, get back into a Digimon mood and then like play Digimon World. I wanted to make a Digimon reference in the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> because, okay, this is a deep cut. <laughs> so if any of you played the fantastic video game Digimon World, which came out late 90s, <laughs> Sam is like a hand in her head. Yes. Head in her hands right there now. I've watched Tyler play it. It's fine. <laughs> there is a place that's like the kind of like dinosaur zone. And you, at one point, they have like the speedy dinosaur dinosaur zone and the like the slow dinosaur zone. And uh-huh. like time passes and, and you're in the speedy, it passes at double speed. And if you're in the slow, it passes at half speed. So the whole time I was thinking about Realm of the Mammoth Lords, I'm like, this is like the slow dinosaur Oh my dinosaur gosh. <laughs> Anyway, I'm about to play Digimon again. Shut. I was imagining this like the dog park where it's like, here are the slow moving dogs and here are the fast moving dogs. Nope, just time. Don't nope. get run over. Nope, just time. Anyway, back to the campaign. <laughs> if you like Digimon, drop me a line because I, I can talk Digimon to anybody. And... Anyway, back anyway, to, back to my, the... my girl, Iv- Ivarsa, and her BFF, Hedramon, not the Digimon. What does Hedramon digivolve into? Hedramon is... Uh... <laughs> Hydramon. Hydramon. Uh, Hydramon. What's or like... wait, is he a hedge into like... What, what does a hedge become? A tree? Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you have, you, you have, you have Shrubdramon <laughs> into Hedramon. <laughs> oh. I'm done. Okay. We apologize to everybody listening. It's like, what the hell are you guys talking about? Anyway, as a GM, ignore the last 10, two minutes of things. Anyway, so they're also kind of looking for this place where Meadowak is. Okay, so so everyone's looking for the same place. And so here's where I'm going to kind of take a step back and kind of give you a background. So the Primordial Flame is a lamp capable of turning barren tundra to vernant forest. Oh, Oh, that seems very relevant. Yeah. So a popular tale of how it came about claims that the Kelid goddess, Sister Cinder, created the flame to lead her followers out of the Age of Darkness. So after Earthfall, they said this is kind of like one of the more popular tales of how it came about was to kind of help in the Age of Darkness to like turn wasteland into forest to survive off of. However it cre- got created, it fell into the hands of the burning mammoths. Uh-oh. Who used it to Uh-oh. preserve the environment oh, and establish... Yeah. Ha! I'm a conservationist, Ryan! <laughs> Dang it's, it. Uh, established migratory patterns across Avistan. You're welcome. How dare you? They very much took the power very responsibly and knew that they had to keep a hold of it and make sure it was very responsibly made to make sure everyone could survive well. I knew I chose Sam right. Sam has the smuggest grin right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, all that changed Uh-oh. when 4606, the demons came out of the world wound. Oh, the yeah. The burning mammoths had to flee into the current current day realm of the mammoth lords. Oh. So, oh, cuz they were in They the... were part of kind of part of this part of their travels were through Okay. this. So 
they couldn't decide what to do about it. They weren't sure whether they wanted to hide it because it's such a powerful artifact that mm-hmm. could like it produce a lot of good or use it to wage war against the demons. Mm. Okay. So eventually, kind of a minority of the elders decided to hide it in the Red Cat Cave and wait until it was safe to unveil it. It's a cave uh, that comes up in the adventure. That's, you know, that's where you search and it's not there. So the majority, the rest of them, were enraged and went to confront the demons and they took the banner of the Burning Mammoth. Uh Uh-oh. The Uh the minority group had to create a new banner, the Broken Tusk. Oh! Dang it. Okay. Yeah. Shoot. So this brings us to Medawak. Once the mammoths got to the world wound, they realized they had no hope against the demons. And in their desperation, allowed a shadow demon named Zaliria to possess one of their brave warriors named Medawak. Uh-oh. So he could return to retrieve the artifact to bring it back to the battlefield and save his, pe- their, his people. Okay. So if it hasn't clicked yet, they allied with a demon. Sure. To Which get an artifact to kill all the demons. Yeah. So he what could go wrong. He managed to come back and obtain the flame. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But on one, his way check, back check mark. to the Burning Mammoths, Zaliria, who was possessing him at the time, kind of slowed his progress and made him dilly dally and just kind of like kind of corrupted him a little bit and made him commit several atrocities. Uh oh. Ooh. Yeah. So at this point, he realized the demon's hold on him was too much. So instead of going to back to the burning mammoths he tried to break the curse oh boy that's a noble okay yeah yeah and this is kind of where the curse on the artifact Mm. happened Um, as long as metawak was alive anybody holding the flame uh, okay. like feels his feels the anguish okay mm. oh that's yeah. kind of sad actually right so he tried to go about breaking this curse he went to a dragon named venexus ah uh, yep there it is who he thought might have some connections to help break the curse she instead saw how dangerous that artifact could be and said uh no we need to destroy this guy so she tried to kill him Oh. Oh. Uh, he used the flame to burn the dragon, but she still sees the lamp and basically like sent him away. Mm. So, so the white dragon was kind of... Okay. Yeah. 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 The white dragon yeah. was like, you know... I usually role play the white dragons as like big dumb idiots, but that's such a smart... <laughs> yeah. No, in this that's case... a smart call. Uh, yeah. The white dragon was here to help. Hmm. I mean, not really help, but was like... I mean... This is too big of power. Yeah, we got to yeah. stop this guy. So then he tried to go to Hillcross which the party was in. Sure. To seek redemption and kind of try to get some help. And to their credit, they tried. They tried to help him, but they couldn't separate man Mm. from demon. Okay. And finally, in desperation, he went to the Mendevian Crusaders in Grim Gorge Castle. Good name for a castle. They basically saw him as a demon spy and imprisoned him. Oh. To be fair, not a bad take. And to their downfall, they weren't technically wrong. Sure. So, while they were imprisoned, Zaliria kind of tapped into her demonic ma- magic and sent a beacon to other demons who came and massacred all the Mendevians. Oh my god. Well, yikes. So, that leads us to Medawak and Zaliria in a dungeon, no way to escape for decades. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. And then they kind of just tortured and, and comforted each other as neither could really kind of get out and they're basically left to them that's rough yeah okay real rough so you guys get to back to the present you guys get to castle grimgorge oh okay and you're searching around and you find meadowax dungeon okay so have we like made up at this point do we we, like sorry the broken tusks are the ones who found this okay so we know but sam doesn't right now. yeah so sam is still bad i think yeah so avarsa is the the starting point for my tribe was good but now i apparently (laughs) am the ones who took the more evil side of things i mean not about evil just just, like you 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 did what you thought you had to it just went so the broken tusks 
find Metawak, kill him, put him to rest, lift the curse. Oh, okay. So okay. the Primordial Flame works now. Yeah. Over over the course of that, you also fight and kill Hedramon. <laughs> Dang it. And then after all that, Ivarsa comes in, take the Primordial Flame from the Broken Tusks. <sighs> Like for a good reason or a bad reason. So let's talk about Avarsa. Uh, <laughs> she, I'm like, what is her motivation? Please uh, say conservationism. <laughs> she is an environmentalist. No, <laughs> she is a burning mammoth who grew up in kind of the Mendivian War. Ooh, I'm sensing some trauma. <laughs> so she went off to the Crusades and thrived. She... Loved it. Sensing some more trauma. Loved, loved murdering demons. Loved the violence. Loved the bloodshed. Oh, boy. So when the world wound closed, she said, I need another outlet. Oh, no. And so she came back to the Burning Mammoths. And found embroidery. And basically <laughs> took up knitting. Now, uh-huh. they, she basically turned the Burning Mammoths, took them over, and turned them into a war... A war band. A brutal war band. She had heard the stories growing up about the traitorous broken tusks, but also that they took the primordial flame or that there was an artifact called the primordial flame. I take back my smug look. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. So she said, we can just get back all our former glory if we get the primordial flame. Mm -hmm. So to do this, she joined up with the frost giants. Specifically, the Greylock clan, led by Hedramon. Sure. So, you might be wondering, what do frost giants want with a primordial flame? Everybody just wants to be warm. The it's answer is, Hedramon wants to destroy it. Oh. Because it turns perfectly great frost land into terrible temperate climate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that actually very much checks out, yeah. So, Hedramon wants to take it and hand it to Jarl Nargarok. Oh, Jarl! To get in his good graces and destroy it because you don't want to wreck good Frostland. Well, sure. Yeah. So both Ivarsa and Hedramon know that they want the lit flame for basically the opposite reasons. Uh-huh. And they both know they're going to betray each other. But they'll deal with that later. Enemy of my enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They teamed up and basically went on a murdering, pillaging, torturing spree. To figure out where the heck this flame was. I mean, it sounds like they have a lot in common. As much as they wanted each other's throats. Yeah. It's an excellent romance. We're going to ship it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. They end up figuring out that after torturing and interrogating a Hillcross historian, that it's hidden in the Lost Mammoth mm. Valley, which I said earlier they couldn't find sure. because it was lost after sure. the world wound and the Great Quake opened. So because they ran out of leads, that's why... They went with the only lead they had, the Broken Tusk following. Oh. So from the get-go, they were trying to follow the Broken Tusk to figure out, to get answers on the Primordial Flame. So it kind of was 4D chess, Sam. I mean, kind of, kind of worked out. Yeah. Did it work out? Was, uh, uh. I mean. So it doesn't work out for Avarsa because <laughs> you kill her. The Broken oh, Tusk, okay, good. Well, take sure. her out. Bye. And yeah. So you have the flame. You have dealt with the leader of the Burning Mammoths. Sorry, Sam. It's all right. I figured I was the baddie when I chose it. Your people are good. Or at least they were well-intentioned. Yeah, they started well. Yeah. I would like to believe that I am actually portraying ye olden grandmother from the Burning Mammoths who's like, it really went to shit when that one showed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tr- back in my day, we liked things. The kind of epilogue to this is you come back and find out that hillcross was attacked by the rest of the burning mammoths and the frost giants okay so here's where the the following builds up because you've been building up your influence and most of your following is back at hillcross how well you did oh on building up your following determines how well hillcross manages Uh uh-oh and so like you can get to, you know, if you if you built up well and roll well on your check, it's like based on how big your following is, you get a, a yeah. check. And then if you succeed, like they take care of them and you're good. And like worst case, if you crit fail this check, Hillcross could be destroyed. Oh. oh. Which kind of sucks. Okay. An interesting mechanic at the end there. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of a cool like ties it all together of building your following. So the kind of real epilogue to the story and unlike the last spoiler guide which 
had large ramifications for the continent. Yes. This one is kind of more open-ended. So as the players, you can kind of choose what you want to do with the primordial flame. You can reignite and kind of like rekindle the, the lost paths. But because your people have adapted over the hundred years since, you know, the, the world wound opened up and closed, you don't necessarily need them to survive. It's not like the ancient times to get out of Earthfall, right? Sure. Um, you could also destroy it. It's too powerful mm. and mm. you can get rid of it that way. So that's kind of up to you. Other things you can do kind of following out of this, since this is only an 11th level campaign, they give you some kind of places you want to go after this. Like you can go fight Nargarok um, because you oh. don't actually deal with him. You kind of deal with his commander. Oh, yeah. He's kind of like, a, yeah. OK. Yeah. So it's like, oh, you could go deal with him. You can do kind of other things. So like it's kind of interesting the different options you can come out of this and like we said in kind of the Erison campaign mm -hmm. or the e Erison reign of winter, like there were a bunch of choices coming out mm -hmm. of it, but like one ended up being canon. Mm -hmm. So it'll be really interesting, interesting to see which one Paizo sets as canon for yeah. this one. But yeah, so that's the adventure. Seems cool. Seems, Very seems interesting. like a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 Not as like world breaking, but like kind of interesting and a good twist at the end yeah. of like, oh, you know, we're all together. I like kind of the intrigue of how the clans we're together and apart. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's really interesting to, to kind of be the players in this where you like you start. It's like, why is this rival clan attacking us? All this stuff. And then you kind of like realize more and more about the history of like yeah. your clan and what happens. So, um, yeah, I feel like that's really cool just from also the perspective of we know that this is a culture of storyteller history yeah. rather than like books. So it's like, oh, we are getting all of our information from word of mouth. So you kind of have to walk through the adventure path collecting that word of yeah. mouth yeah. from well, the different people that you're it's, meeting. It's kind of interesting, too, because one thing I didn't kind of touch on is like the Broken Tusks were the kind of follower or were the protectors of the flame, right? Yeah. They were the ones who came out. And after Meadowak came and stole it, they kind of like lost their way a little bit, mm -hmm. too, because they're like, we've had one job. And we failed. And then mm. they kind of went, it fell back into that storied history of exactly what happened. So by the time you guys hear it, the Broken Tusks are like, Primordial Flame, what is this? Right. Mm. The current day, even though their clan was, were the protectors at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Neat. I love it. Yeah. Like I said, I really want to play this. And Connor, <laughs> if you made it this far, don't say anything to your wife. <laughs> or anyone else. <laughs> or anybody else in that campaign. I'm watching you. But yeah, so that's uh, what we have for the spoiler guide today. Glad you guys have come joined me on this. Yeah, it sounds um, like fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely I, be down to play this. Mm. I love the, all the adventure paths. As a GM who runs exclusively adventure paths, like this is one that I thought at the again I was like, eh, let's we'll see how it is. Then I'm like, dang, that seems fun. <laughs> yeah, both from like the hex crawl and the story, and just like yeah, riding freaking mammoths, triceratops. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. Thanks to everybody. If you if you listen to this one, enjoy the second episode of the day. Um, if you listen to both, but until next time, safe travels, everybody. Mm -hmm.